my research has been really concerned with how security produces different relational orders. And I have followed that thread from securitization theory to diplomatic studies through grant strategy. Securitization theory is regarded as one of the most dominant approaches to security. Now, what is it about? It is about how certain issues become security problems. The approach I have tried to develop is called a sociological view of securitization. It focuses more on contextual factors, including emotions, history, or political regimes. It also insists on combining different methods, discourse analysis, content analysis, process tracing, uh, for instance. And it is agnostic, normatively speaking. I don't start with the view that securitization is either positive or negative. I think this should be decided you know, issue by issue. And, of course, in general, securitization is negative, in particular when it targets particular certain groups in a society. It could produce uh, trust disruption. It could also uh, have uh, extreme consequences on social cohesion. It could disempower certain group and empower others uh, in a society. Now, I have also been working on grand strategy. Grand strategy also is a relational phenomenon. It is how actually it's about how states uh, try to, you know, uh, balance uh, the amount of opportunity and threat they have out there and the resources that they have at hand. And they try to do that in medium to long term. Now, grand strategy has been uh, often studied in rational choice guise. Our empirical work we've done trying to compare states of different scales and size actually shows that grand strategy is not only a rational process. It involves a couple of things like emotion as well. But in particular, it's a soul-searching exercise. It's a state asking itself what it is or what it wants to be, uh, now and in the future as well. The research I'm trying to do now um, uh, try to take some of these questions a little bit forward, and, but in different direction, I have, to, I have to admit. The first one is on diplomacy, diplomatic studies. And this is where I try to use rituals as a way of revising our understanding of theories of actions in world politics. The second one is trying to develop a relational theory of grand strategy. Here, moving from, you know, the understanding and the admission that yes, grand strategy, the world is relational to, if it is, how should we study it? The third one that I'm trying to do, uh, that this is something that is really dear to my heart, is trying to uh, understand what is called the multilateralism crisis through a normative lens. I have always been interested in understanding the sources, the normative sources of a problem and the normative implication of the solution that we propose. My research has been really guided by, I would say, three uh, principles. Well, now I'm not saying that I set sail with this principle in mind, right? I came to cultivate this principle along the way. The first one is conceptual and methodological eclecticism. I'm always surprised when I hear some of my colleagues saying, I'm a realist, I'm a constructivist, or I'm a Marxist. Well, I think we should be interested more in problems and seeing whether we could combine critical and conventional approaches to solve these problems. If they could, then I'm fine. I'm not wedded to any particular school of thought. The second one is transparency. Transparency here means I have to show my colleagues and students how I went about doing what I did, which means my work would always have the theory, the empirics, but also a framework for analysis, how to do it, so that if somebody wants to try in her own context, he or she could do it and see if that, you know, yield similar results or different kind of results or improve on what I have tried to do or just dismantle it. The third principle that I try to follow is a strong commitment to, the, uh, to bridging the research policy gap. I think we as, a, as scholars, and in particular as social scientists I would say, we have that strong responsibility to really show the next generation or the society at large how and why 
what we do actually matters.